Jaya, welcome, beautiful beings. The topic for this video is Is it okay to post sexy yoga pictures on uh, Instagram? I know this is a controversial topic, but that touches on so many things, on the evolutions of of uh, traditions where the yoga and tantra come from and is it okay to simply let whatever happen and uh, in my opinion i'm going to tell you straight away yes please let the yoga and the tantra tradition evolve you know um there is something that is happening which we could call modernization of uh, of traditions and something that has been designed like 500 or 1000 years ago doesn't need to be fixed you know in any traditions you would have a guru or a teacher uh, showing up today, a prophet would reorganize life around the values that we are in today. You know, the broadcasting and the communication that is being used today is uh, through social media. So something like yoga and tantra uh, gain momentum and value by being shared everywhere. Here is what happens to me when I see some, some poses, yoga poses on an Instagram profile. It inspires me. I see the beauty. I see the joy of the person. I see the, the perfection of the poses. I see something that inspires me to, to, to you know, to either do the same or, or try. And I'm sure that, you know, if you have somebody who is like one of those Instagram uh, stars, right? And you have like a million followers over there posting uh, yoga poses. Guess what? This, this is, a, this is the, the, the beauty of these poses are being transmitted and reaching the world. It's the equivalent of writing a book with poses, you know, 50 years ago or 100 years ago. This book itself arriving in somebody's hand, you know, all the way from India might change that person's life forever. So you can be there reactive and be like, oh, it's different than the way it used to be. And, and uh, I want to stop this evolution because we are diluting the, the ancient teachings and so on. Well, you know, just get, get over it. It's like life is an ongoing evolution. If you want to control the spirit of yoga and lock it in the forms that it was 500 years ago, you are aiming for a big, big disappointment because yoga is not stacked in the past. Yoga is a present, you know, formless source of energy and inspiration that is alive right now, today, and is evolving. The fact that a teacher crystallizes the teaching in a certain form 500 years ago doesn't mean that this is all there is. The spirit of yoga goes beyond any definition, any control from any human being, okay? And it is the same for the spirit of Tantra. For me, the two of them converge, okay? We're not going to go into that, but right now we are talking about yoga. The evolution of yoga is needed, okay? If it wasn't for that evolution, it would not have reached the West. Right now, there are probably more people practicing yoga and Hatha yoga in the West, in the US, than there are in India. It's an evolution. And it's an evolution that cannot be stopped. Okay? Are there shadows in the field of modern yoga? Yes! There are, of course, no tradition is perfect. There are certain people who are doing stuff that feels uncomfortable over commercialization of certain things. Yes, it's there. Sometimes you have people, teachers, like in India, like in the West, who are misbehaving according to the traditional code of conduct. And that's okay, you know, it's being human. This is how it happens. Yoga doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be like this transcendental thing, um, you know, with this incredible aura. Yes, it, it has that dimension and that vibration, but it is happening within the human realm. And we as human beings, we make sometimes mistakes, we try, we do things. But if you stop trying, guess what? The evolution stops. If you're afraid of making mistakes, Guess what's going to happen? You are going to freeze. So the fact that you have certain people going around and, you know, creating this, these beautiful shots in some sacred places, it's inspiring. It's beauty. 
So if you are reactive to it and you go like, wow, I cannot relate to that, that's fine. Go to some, some cave somewhere in the Himalayas and meditate over there the way I did. You know, this is great. It's practical. But when somebody is taking an action forward that is reaching thousands of people, millions of people, guess what? Is that a positive thing? Of course it is. It's inspiring. And you go like, wow, the teaching is diluted because it doesn't have the same vibrational frequency that you would have somewhere in a Himalayan cave with some sadhu over there. Yes, it's different because it's aimed at reaching the masses. Is there a problem with reaching the masses? No, no. This is why it's so powerful. This is why this movement is so powerful and so precious because millions of people around the planet are now being influenced by a movement, by something that is good for them. You see, you need entrance points into these traditions. You need, you need to realize that if it wasn't for this Instagram post and, and people broadcasting and being, being out there and showing their face and daring to expose themselves with that stuff, lots of people would never get the message because they, they don't have the time, the energy, they don't have access to travel to India, to some, to some ashram over there. So they have to access whatever is available to them in, in there. And guess what? You know, yoga is competing with brands. It's competing with big brands, with, with the junk advertising. I prefer arriving on Instagram and being blasted with people doing yoga poses and singing mantras and being there in the power, in their optimization, rather than, than being blasted with stupid advertising about junk food and medication. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Of course, I want, I want this, this message to be out there and resonating and vibrating. So if you as a yoga practitioner, you go like, wow, yeah, it's not something I want to do. I, f I find this distorting my message or my consciousness. Then fine, just go back to yourself. Don't expose yourself. Don't subscribe to this stuff. It's easy. It's simple for your own choice. But is it good for the tradition of yoga? Of course it is. Commercialization of yoga, right? You go back to ancient times. Nobody was commercializing yoga. If you right now, if you are teaching and receiving money for your teachings, you are already distorting the original tradition. What do you think? Adi Yogi, you know, the perfect yogi, the original teacher was there. No, I'm not going to transmit that message to you unless I get paid for it because I deserve to be paid for, for this expertise. You go, oh, no, that's already a distortion. If you get paid to teach yoga, you're already distorting the original message. And that's okay, that's fine. The commercialization of yoga that is happening right now in the West is what gives it momentum. If you were not allowed to make money teaching this science, many people would not engage into it. They would have to spend their time looking for another job. So the fact that they, have, they are being rewarded for their efforts, for all their teaching and training, makes it available to the sources. It makes it available to the masses, to millions of people out there who are waiting for that message. Okay? So the fact that it's reaching out, the fact that it's, you know, arriving out there in the world, that's fantastic, that's great, okay? It's an actualization. A tradition like yoga is a source of energy. It's formless originally, and it's traveling around the world. It's a globalization of a movement. And the fact that it's reaching the world, it means that it's, it has momentum. And it's great, it's fantastic. And if you feel offended by it, ask yourself, why do you feel offended? Is there somewhere behind that a competitive or rivalry response? It's like a net boy. No, don't post, on, don't post on Instagram. You're not allowed to do that. If it's a rivalry response, a jealousy or envy response, then question that. And where is that coming from? Right? It's an egoic response. It's like you want to compete. You want to do better. So, is there, is there a problem with rivalry and competition? No, it's again, it's the same thing. This is part of human nature. This is how we progress. This is how, how we move forward. You know, the same when um, I, I saw some uh, messages or some, com some comments about um, those, those pictures sometime, sometimes having a sexy or an erotic connotation to them. <laughs> oh my God, are you kidding me? We are sexual beings. 
there is nothing wrong with things being erotic and sexy. It's not porn, you know, it's not like exposing your genitals out there. <laughs> but you are a sexy person. You have sexual energy inside of you. When you go into yoga pose, it doesn't mean that you have to put your sexual energy aside. You can do that if you want to, to completely transcend your sexual desires and so on. That's fine, that's beautiful. But somebody posts a picture and you say, wow, this, this looks way too erotic or too sexy. Are you kidding me? It's not a crime. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a crime to be... Um, you know, to be, to be sexy and erotic. It's perfectly okay, it's part of life, it's part of our culture, it's part of the, 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 the spirit in which we live. So, you know, I've got passion here. What I'm sharing here, you are completely free to disagree with what I'm saying, but maybe you will be like, oh yeah, those kind of mindsets make sense. These are the kind of things that I always wanted to, to tap into. Maybe it gives you some hints about how to position yourself. And if you feel like you are in reactive, getting triggered all the time by this stuff, like, why are you getting triggered? What are the places in your system that respond through trigger? The trigger, I mean, the way I interpret it is like, you have a desire to control other people's actions. You have a desire to control something that is out of your control. The trigger itself is like, ah, uh, it's an energy or a vibration or a frequency that my system cannot take. And so I get triggered, contraction, and then I block and contract. So here is something. It's like, yoga is free, okay? Yoga is a free spirit. Nobody has control over it. Not even the ancient teachers, not even the ancient gurus. Yes, some people have more authority than others, some people are more recognized than others, but basically the, the tradition is evolving in its own way. And something you have to do with that is trust the spirit of yoga. The spirit of yoga is intelligent. Okay, it's not just some mechanical thing that people are responding to. No, they are being guided to make certain choices. When somebody has been meditating for years and then they go and create a yoga studio with a certain vibe, they are being guided, it's their truth. There is a powerful source of inspiration coming through their being. And so I want to honor that, you know, trust that spirit, trust, trust that every person who is inspired by the yoga world, you know, even if they didn't make it to India, uh, are being inspired from a deep place. And sometimes that, that inspiration might be a bit distorted, might be confused. Yeah, that's fine, that's human beings. That doesn't give you the right to tell them to stop playing music, okay, or to stop teaching. So it's a, you know, it's a beautiful thing to look at because if you don't look only at yoga, you can look at any tradition in the same way, anything that you do in life. Oh yeah, when there were no cars, when we were running on bicycles, when we were in the jungle just eating the leaves, that was, that was the good old days. <laughs> It's like, man, the world is going so fast. It's either you jump on it and you jump on the evolution wagon and allow evolution to happen or you block and you stay back and then you go like, okay, well, now, now everybody's moving. No, don't go so fast. I cannot follow. No, go fast. We have no choice as a human race. And yes, give it your own flavor. You know, if you are a teacher who goes like, wow, I don't want to be on Instagram, I don't want to be on social media, I want to teach one-on-one, -on -one, or I want to teach in small groups, small classes, I want my students to come to the forest with me or in a cave somewhere in the Himalayas, I want to meditate under the rain, be extreme in the weather, find your own style, of course. Call it wild yoga. But if you call it wild yoga, don't trademark it, okay? <laughs> This is the place. I get triggered by something? Yeah, I get triggered by trademarks and copyrights, okay? <laughs> That's my own trigger. It's not extreme, you know, but I think when I, when I see somebody, a teacher, putting a trademark on anything that contains the word yoga, yeah, it pisses me off, a part of me. I'm not angry with that person, but I go like, no, don't do it. Okay, so that's my own, you see, that's my own boundary. And you might be like, well, trademarking protects, you know, the commercial structures and so on. Yeah, I get that. But in my, in my opinion, those trademarks are not needed. If you are the best at doing what you do, then, then just be the best. So that you offer a competitive edge through that, rather than trying to control a, a certain, certain word. <laughs> okay. You see, I'm really passionate about that and uh, I hope you get the, the, the positive vibe behind that. This is not, um, you know, to, 
to attack anything or anybody. This is an open conversation, an open dialogue. Again, if you have other opinions on that, feel free to you know, to, to follow your own truth. This is my truth right now. I'm really happy that uh, yoga did reach around the world. When I was 15, 16, when I started doing yoga, I was in high school and out of 400 students, I was the only one showing up. There was nobody else, you know. All my friends were like, oh yeah, here, go back to your clouds, you know. You're... <laughs> it was hilarious. And now, you know, when I go back to Switzerland to the people, everybody's doing yoga. It's great. It's fantastic. Everybody's doing yoga and meditation. But guess what? It's because it, bec it became mainstream. The reason why it became mainstream is because people have been teaching. They have been sending the message out. They have been promoting it actively. And they have to use, to do that, you have, you have to use whatever medium is available. If you write a book on yoga and it takes you five years to put it together with all the pictures and then through that, through that heavy paper manual, you, you know, only a few people are going to reach, you sell a thousand copies or five thousand copies. Well, guess what? If in the meantime you have been posting thousands of pictures on Instagram and reaching millions of people, guess what is going to have the highest impact? And it doesn't mean that the depth is not different, but you get my point, right? Use whatever is available and go for it. Don't be afraid of making mistakes and don't be afraid of triggering certain people who might not like what you're doing. The thing is that most people, you know, lots of people are going to respond positively if you come from a place which is a place of truth, your own spirit, and you are being guided from within. So trust yourself. Don't let anybody distract you from that. And um, yeah, stay in the field of love. In the field of inspiration, we are going to f really fast right now on this planet. And um, the evolution of yoga and tantra is unstoppable. It's happening, whether you like it or not. You get that? <laughs> there is no, you know, it's not possible to stop it. And it doesn't have to be stopped. On the contrary, it has to be allowed. Set it free. Set the spirit of yoga free. I love you.